Listen very carefully and follow my instructions. Prepare your brain for the Live Cortex Nootropic Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Live Cortex Nootropic Podcast. We're going to talk about nootropic stacking strategies here. And this has a, a root, a deep root in the history of nootropics and smart drugs in general. It has a lot of good reasons behind putting certain nutrients, certain smart drugs together. And we're going to talk about all that stuff. We're going to discuss various nootropic stacking strategies and the individual nootropics to put together to uh, reach great stack outcomes. And this comes for me for six years of nootropic experimentation with both the natural compounds, uh, the well-studied smart drugs like paracetamol, and aniracetam, as well as some of the pretty intense nootropic herbs like the alkaloid huperzine A, which uh, in my opinion is one of the most powerful nootropics I've ever tried and exists. We'll talk about how stacking is a deeply integrated part of taking and using nootropics and smart drugs because a lot of them require uh, sort of cofactors to work well or to avoid side effects, which we're going to talk about. We'll dive into the entourage of well-known smart drugs called the racetams and how they usually require a precursor to the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to to be effective or at least to avoid side effects. And we'll get into some of my favorite stacks that I've used to build two businesses over the past four years and to do so with better brain function than my baseline. To give you a quick list of nootropics we're going to discuss, we're going to get into paracetam, aniracetam, oxyracetam, artichoke extract, shankapushbi, acetyl L carnitine, L theanine, caffeine, choline bitartrate, triacetyluridine, CDP choline, uridine monophosphate, bacopa monnieri, and more. All that and a ton more coming right up. I gotta tell you, having been an entrepreneur for six years, I will not go through the rest of my life without taking smart drugs. Aniracetam, paracetam, uridine monophosphate, alcar, CDP choline. You can always have a better brain. The Live Cortex Nootropic Podcast is about to begin. Let's get into it. First, let's uh, talk about why stacking matters, because I think that this is something that people might on the outside be like, well, why, why does it matter to stack, and why do people stack? Uh, and a little confirmation for those of us who do stack. For a lot of nootropics, taken with other nootropics make them work better. For example, uridine and alpha-GPC work synergistically with DHA, the omega-3 fatty acid. Aniracetam, the well-known smart drug, works synergistically with CDP choline. Alcar or acetyl L-carnitine works synergistically with alpha GPC and so on and so on and so on and so on forever. Some nootropics are stacked to balance out the effects of one of them. So for example, caffeine is often stacked with L-theanine, which is a calming amino acid to offset some of the overstimulation effects of the former, uh, but still leaving the brain performance optimization intact and the effects uh, from the former that you know speed up the brain, speed up the brain's processing. Other stacks are put together just because their mechanisms work in a way that when taken together gives them a great result. And there are a ton of nootropics for which this is the case, and we're going to get into them in a bit. But the overarching point here is that while some nootropics are great by themselves, uh, stacking or putting multiple nootropics together in one dose and kind of like one stack, that's what a stack is, a stack of different supplements or different nootropics, is uh, very common and highly effective depending on the stack. Uh, it's a highly effective way to get a great nootropic result. Some stacks, as you'll find out you know, in the rest of this podcast, work to keep the brain's neurotransmitters optimal while some constituents of the same stack uh, work on utilizing and thus potentially depleting said neurotransmitters. So that's one of the reasons it's important to have other kind of cofactors in the stack. Some stacks might be overstimulating at some capacity, uh, so taking them with balancers as in the caffeine L-theanine stack and others is a good idea. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of these kind of distinctions to make when getting into stacks, and uh, that's kind of what this, this uh, podcast is about. So, without further ado, let's get into some of the awesome smart drug and nootropic stacks that I've experimented with, that a lot of other people experiment with, and that you might experiment with in the future. Fittingly, the first stack that I want to talk about is the racetam choline stack. The racetam choline stack is an age-tested, tried-and-true nootropic stack that has two parts to it, a racetam smart drug and a choline source. Now that could be aniracetam and choline bitartrate. It could be paracetam and alpha-GPC. It could be oxyracetam and CDP choline. The list basically goes on forever, but I'd like to explain the basis for why nootropics, why the nootropics community pairs racetams with a choline source and explain to you if you're not already privy, if you haven't figured this out, if you haven't read about it, what exactly a choline source is. 
As we explained in podcast number three, where we talked about oxiracetam, which is, you know, I had an interesting experience with that, and it's one of my favorite racetams so far. The racetam smart drugs are essentially an entourage of chemical compounds with a suffix racetam that uh, have a similar mechanism of action. They work on the glutamate and cholinergic receptors in the brain. They've been around for decades, uh, studied extensively, and have hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of documented user experience all around the web, the bulk of which are positive. The thing about the racetams, though, is that because they they increase acetylcholine utilization in various parts of the brain. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter responsible for focus, memory, and other things, muscle functioning, a bunch of things, including the hippocampus, uh, you know, is one of the places where acetylcholine gets utilized when taking racetams. Uh, this basically means that in layman terms, some of the racetams put into circulation that neurotransmitter, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, leading to a faster usage and thus depletion of that neurotransmitter in your brain, which might not be good news. This means that for a great majority of people that take them, them being the racetams, they need to also take a choline source that is a substance that through its various processes contributes to more acetylcholine in the brain. And a lot of substances like uh, choline bitartrate, alpha GPC, CDP choline, and others do exactly that. Now listen, don't ransack me when I'm getting into my car in the morning with troll-like internet slurs because I acknowledge that the mechanisms for the racetams, at least as they relate to cholinergic activation and acetylcholine depletion, are not well understood. And there might be actually an entirely different mechanism behind why some people get headaches taking the racetams if they don't have a choline source. But the, the anecdotal evidence speaks for itself, and, and that really should not be discounted here. In fact, dare I say that anecdotal experience of some of the best data out there to formulate hypotheses and thus determine how you're going to approach something. I think so. I use anecdotal data from nootropic users all around the world for a host of reasons, and most of the really solid disproportionate anecdotal data, i.e. having a choline source when you take racetams, is uh, in fact very convincing. So that said, the racetam choline stack has some solid data behind it in my eyes to suggest taking the two together, uh, that is uh, a racetam and a choline source, uh, is a good idea to prevent what has largely been called a racetam headache, which based on what we just talked about is some sort of pulsating kind of intermittent ice pick headache that comes from the brain using too much acetylcholine and not getting it repleted fast enough. The way to fix that, of course, is to take a racetam with a choline source so that you have the choline source converting to the neurotransmitter acetylcholine and keeping up with the utilization of acetylcholine in your brain with more raw material to make more acetylcholine. So the actual stack here could be any of the following. Aniracetam and CDP choline, paracetam and choline by tartrate, oxiracetam and alpha GPC, oxiracetam and choline by tartrate, oxiracetam and CDP choline, aniracetam and alpha GPC, paracetam and CDP choline, on and on and on and on and on and on forever. You get the drift. In other words, you're going to have to find out out of the choline sources which ones work best for you with which racetam. You know, for example, some people do well with paracetam and choline by tartrate, something like 1,500 milligrams of the former, 500 milligrams of the latter. For others, that won't be the most optimal strategy. And instead, it's going to be something like 1,500 milligrams paracetam and 200 milligrams of of alpha GPC. The difference between choline by tartrate and alpha GPC primarily is the latter's ability to cross the blood brain barrier and thus work directly on the brain in a faster way. Uh, for other people, the best combination there might be 1500 milligrams of paracetam and 150 milligrams of a substance called CDP choline, which is another bioavailable blood brain barrier crossing choline source that has a few other interesting properties as well. I'm like obsessed with this nutrient, uh, not the least of which is the conversion to uridine in the brain and the improvement of acetylcholine and dopamine receptor densities in the brain. But overall, whatever combination you put together and whatever experimentation you use, the overarching point and stack here is to take a racetam with a choline source. Now, I do want to quick mention that for some people, counter to everything I just said, they won't need a choline source whatsoever, and one can only speculate that the reason why is because they already have enough circulating acetylcholine, that neurotransmitter, in their brain as it is. Maybe they eat a lot of eggs, which are packed with a B vitamin uh, choline that turns into acetylcholine in the brain. Maybe they have high levels of acetylcholine naturally, as there is some suspicion out there in the nootropic community that some people can be what's called choline dominant, a uh, term a biohacker named Dave Asprey coined, suggesting that the levels of acetylcholine these people produce is naturally high. It just so happens that I am one of those people and rarely need to take a choline source with any of the racetams that I take. In fact, very recently I've been experimenting with oxyracetam uh, without a choline source. While I really haven't had a completely smooth ride, 
it was about 99% smooth. I actually got a, an ice pick headache sensation for about four seconds, two times over the course of 15 hours, which is like not bad at all. But perhaps in order to alleviate that like small little interval of ice pick headache, uh, I'll add 50 milligrams of CDP choline uh, the next time I take oxiracetam. Again, the point being that maybe what's happening here is I am depleting or I'm using too much acetylcholine, the oxiracetam is, because that's one of the things that it does, and I am not repleting it in uh, sort of a, a commensurate manner. But the universal message here is that the racetams, whichever racetam you decide to use, choline stack is quite the powerful one. For, for lots of users, it's able to increase verbal fluency, working and long-term memory, creativity, speed of processing, and a whole lot more. Some people even report being able to notice subtle perceptual changes like the enhancement of colors from ordinary things in the environment that they uh, wouldn't normally take the time to appreciate or pay attention to. My current experimental stack right now, just so you guys know, is 200 to 400 milligrams sublingually of oxyracetam a day by itself. Uh, but now that I talked about that experience that I had with a slight ice pick headache that was coming kind of intermittently and only happened for a total of probably about eight seconds within the span of 15 hours, I'll be adding a slight bit of choline source experimentally in the future. If you want to hear about my experience with oxiracetam, check out podcast 003 of the Live Cortex Neutropics podcast where we talk about how it allowed me to focus and retain my functionality in a sleep deficit. All right, on to the next stack. This stack is a stack I came up with and experiment with different combinations while creating the Cortex Generation 1 nootropic stack. It was cool because like at the beginning, I sourced a bunch of chemicals in to figure out how they work together and to create what was in my mind the ultimate nootropic stack. And one of them is a compound called Shankapushpi. Shankapushpi is actually an Ayurvedic stack in and of itself. It's not just one compound. It's a stack consisting of four different chemicals that are extremely hard to pronounce that I will list on the livecortex.com podcast page where this podcast is being hosted so you can get an idea on the bottom line of it. But, you know, the, the through and through of Shankapushpi is it has a great ability to improve memory and intellect in its users. For me, Shankapushpi by itself is pretty calming. The first time I took it, it gave me like a really clear focused brain for about two to four hours, which was interesting. But uh, what I want to talk about is the stack I threw together and experimenting with various stacks in the beginning in the experimental stages of the formation of the cortex nootropic that uh, had the following ingredients with the following dosages. 500 milligrams of Shankapushpi and 500 milligrams of artichoke extract. Now, this is a super interesting stack, folks, because artichoke extract was popularized first by the Siltep stack for potentially being able to aid in long-term potentiation in the brain and thus facilitating brain performance functionality. And we also used it in small doses in the cortex nootropic stack because it seemed to enhance the functionality of the rest of the stack. But put together with Shankapushpi, I experienced something else entirely. I remember sitting down, like this was the setting. I remember sitting down with a friend about 30 minutes after I administered it and having this conversation um, about like, I forget what we were talking about, real estate. And we were, talking, we were talking about other entrepreneurs in our area. The friend that I was sitting down with was another entrepreneur. We were kind of like rolling through, how's everybody doing? How's everyone's business is going? And earlier in the conversation, there was a name of a guy that we were trying to remember that neither of us could, could pull out of our brains. We were just kind of like drawing a blank on this guy's name. And it was one of those tip of the tongues things, but like, it was so far out to me, like I could not reach for it. It was more like, you know, tip of the tonsils. But then when the stack kicked in, I tried remembering the name again to this guy we were talking about, and it was like magic. It was like right there in my brain. I was amazed at how readily available this name was when 30 minutes prior, I was just completely and utterly incapacitated in the realm of remembering who the heck this guy was. My friend and I were sitting down drinking uh, wine that day, so we were kind of, as far as I remember, we were pretty deep into that bottle, so that probably explains some of the functionality issues I was having with memory. But the, the stack of 500 milligrams of artichoke extract and 500 milligrams of shankapushpi took me is like it took me right back into functionality from you know the alcohol induced deficit and i was impressed i mean like more than impressed since then i've repeated the great results taking the stack and having great memory recall by itself um and i think this might be a great stack for a college student going into like a testing environment a productive knowledge worker going into memory intensive work period or an entrepreneur that needs to stack multiple elements of information in their head throughout the day or I guess virtually anyone else that wants to have an improvement in memory and improvement in recall and improvement in functionality. Try it. Report back to us at at Live Cortex on Twitter and let me know what you think. The next stack I want to talk about is triacetyluridine and CDP choline. For me, uh, particularly, my dosages for the stack are 60 milligrams of triacetyluridine and 50 milligrams of CDP choline, both taken sublingually. If you were to take it in capsule form, you might want to change the dosages a little bit based on the absorption rate there, uh, but you know, experimentation is highly recommended. Both of these are extremely effective at low doses, so you shouldn't need to dose too high. 
This to me is the ultimate writing stack. I mean, like if you ever want a writing stack, you want to sit down and write, this is it. It's similar in concept to the to the uridine and CDP choline combination in the Cortex Gen 1 stack, which to me is like the ultimate workhorse stack, hence its name. Cortex Gen 1 is actually called workhorse. Gen 1 is workhorse. And that it provides the raw materials for phosphatidylcholine synthesis, extra acetylcholine in the brain, and overall neuronal functioning. I say this is a great stack for writing because I write a lot, whether it's crafting a podcast like this or crafting a blog post on livecortex.com or even imobilerescue.com, another one of my companies where I blog to market the company uh, or in any other writing situation. If you're a college student that needs to write an essay or if you're just like a regular dude that needs to write a hate letter to your ex-girlfriend because she left you when you went on a two-week vacation to the Bahamas, this is a stack for you. Try acetyluridine, which is a slightly more bioavailable version of uridine monophosphate alone has uh, some pretty interesting effects to it. I've gotten, I've always gotten verbal fluency and recall effects from it, memory improvement effects from it, motivation enhancements, and uh, the ability to hold more items in my brain at once always seems to be enhanced, kind of like with aniracetam. CDP choline, the other constituent of this stack, is also very stimulating, and for most people it's motivating, which makes it a great part of this stack, partially because it has the ability to increase neuroadrenaline and dopamine levels in the central nervous system. So I tried to find the right dose for you, but Something like 60 milligrams of triacetyluridine and 50 milligrams of CDP choline is a great place to start. And then from there, kind of just like moving it back and forth, you might want to just experiment. And again, you don't have to take it sublingually, which is under the tongue to let it dissolve in your bloodstream like I did. You could capsulize it and then maybe kind of double those doses. Like you could capsulize it and maybe do something like 100 milligrams of triacetyluridine and uh, 100 milligrams of CDP choline. Or, I mean, you could just throw in a capsule 60 milligrams of triacetyluridine and 50 milligrams of CDP choline and it might affect you the same way. I was reading a little bit more about sublingual administration, under the tongue administration. One of the important factors there is that it does not go through the liver to process. The liver processing a drug is, is called the first past concept when it comes to drugs. And if you take it under the tongue, it doesn't do that. The liver also has the capacity to change the chemical structure of what you're taking and thus maybe negate its efficacy or change its efficacy at some level. So I just want to keep that in mind there. But overall, whether you decide to take this in capsule form or you decide to take it sublingually, you are going to find that this is a pretty impressive stack and you will thank me, my friends. You will thank me. The next stack I want to discuss is a combination of acetyl L-carnitine and Bacopa Monieri. Acetyl L-carnitine is essentially L-carnitine, which is an amino acid, combined with acidic acid to improve bioavailability. Alcar has been shown to decrease an age-related pigment that builds up in the brain and body, uh, impairing your functionality, called lipofussin, as well as provide a better usage of fatty acids for energy in the mitochondria of brain cells. Users typically report an increase in overall mental energy, focus, uh, verbal fluency, and a bunch of other things when taking Alcar. And some people even take it with their pre-workout as a way of pumping themselves up to go lift at the gym. Bacopa Monieri is an ages-old adaptogenic herb that through dendritic enhancement, among other mechanisms, improves memory functionality and acts as a modulator of the way that your body deals with stress. That's what adaptogens are. They essentially take your body and change the way that it, that it handles stress. In a way that makes you handle stress a lot better. What I find in combining 400 milligrams of Alcar with 300 milligrams of Bacopa Monieri, that's kind of like my good clean stack combo right there, that's my quantity combo, is a super clean focus arising from the stack. It's as if the Bacopa takes the edge off of the stimulatory nature of acetyl L-carnitine, because it's, it's kind of stimulatory, and makes the stack uh, even out in a great way, possibly comparable to the combination of caffeine and L-theanine, caffeine being the major pusher of brain performance, and the theanine being the agent that takes the overstimulation out of the stack to balance it out in a great way. I take the stack just to get some variety in my nootropic stacks throughout a given month, uh, and for me, it's always had a pleasant effect. Acetyl L-carnitine was at one at one point a constituent of the Cortex Gen One stack, and then I you know I realized that Bacopa, which is also in the Cortex Gen One stack, uh, was synergistic with Alcar based on my experiences. So we we ended up by the way taking the Alcar out of the Cortex Gen One stack because it kind of made the stack a little too stimulatory, possibly because of the production of acetylcholine, which Alcar doesn't necessarily do directly, but eventually parts of acetyl L-carnitine will in fact contribute to uh, the acetylcholine system. In combination with uridine and CDP choline as well, that was a very stimulatory stack. I'm looking to put Alcar into a future stack because I think Alcar is amazing and I really want to give it the chance to uh, to perform well in a different stack. But Alcar and Bacopa Monieri is a great stack to put together. Again, your mileage is going to vary in effect and dosage, so experiment wisely. The last stack that I want to talk about is stacking Cortex Gen 1 with Aniracetam. This to me was like 
the crazy experience. I actually did a YouTube video on it. You can Google YouTube, YouTube, Google uh, Cortex Gen 1 and Aniracetam stack. Uh, I've since confirmed this with a bunch of other people that have tried the stack and loved it. And you know, I did this video about it because I was like sitting there wired in 30 minutes later, like completely blown away on how the stack was affecting me. And I, I don't know. I mean, it was like one of the most powerful stacks I have ever taken. It just put me in a place where I was like locked into things. So Cortex Generation 1, if you haven't heard by now, if you don't know, or you haven't put it together based on what we've explained so far in the podcast is CDP choline, uridine monophosphate, artichoke extract, and bacopa monnieri combined in a 610 milligram serving size, which has really been stirring up some interest in the nootropics community because people have been having really great experiences with it. Aniracetam is one of the racetam drugs that we talked about that you normally need to take a choline source with. Essentially what I suspect is happening here is the aniracetam uh, working its way on your glutamate receptors and enhancing cholinergic transmission and cholinergic receptor functionality is also working in synergy with the CDP choline and the uridine monophosphate, which eventually will in fact enhance the acetylcholine system, the CDP choline actually creating more acetylcholine in the brain. In fact, the uridine doing the same thing too, and that is the basis at least partially for the synergy. When I took it, I, I felt this insane energy to work on a lot of things. It was like the Cortex stack is a focus stack, right? It's a stack that makes you want to sit down and do work and gives you the capacity to do that work without stopping. And Aracetam is different. And Aracetam for some people does allow them to focus and does put them in a place where they can focus for long periods of time. But for, for other people who maybe have a good baseline capacity to focus, Aracetam seems to just make, like me, for example, Aracetam allows me to focus, but it makes me want to focus on more than one thing. You know, it kind of puts me in a place where I want to focus on a bunch of different things that coincide together, but I want to kind of, I don't want to just be stuck on one thing. I, I like to kind of multitask, you know, in a bunch of different elements that are that are interconnected in some way. So it was weird because I, I ended up in taking the stack, I ended up with the focus ability, but still with that aniracetam like capacity to hold a whole bunch of things in my brain. So it's like what I ended up doing was focusing on this thing that required a whole bunch of, it really just had like a bunch of different working, moving parts to it. And then finding a solution to that thing, it was a really interesting state that I was in. And I did a podcast, I did a, a video review on that stack on YouTube while I was in that state and you can go watch it. It was pretty awesome. My dosage for this was one serving of Cortex Gen 1, which is 610 milligrams of the ingredients in Cortex. And it was 700 milligrams of Aniracetam. It did me quite well. I weighed it out on a scale, so I suggest you do the same and uh, hey, report back at Live Cortex on Twitter if you have an interesting experience with it. All right, folks, that has been the podcast on nootropic stacking. And the message I, I want to make sure hits home is that stacking is necessary for a variety of reasons. Some nootropics require other nootropics to work effectively. Some nootropics work better in synergy with others. Some chemicals can be, you know, as we've all probably come to understand now, a bit too stimulatory for some people. So having other chemicals in the stack that kind of take the edge off is a smart thing to do. And when we're talking about the mechanisms of the racetam complex of smart drugs, making sure that you're taking them with a choline source is a great precautionary measure to ensure your brain is repleting the acetylcholine that the racetam stack is potentially depleting and you're not running into the, the common side effect there, which is ice pick headaches, otherwise known as racetam headaches. All this isn't to say, though, that nootropic stacking is the only way to go. Because I got to be honest with you, I myself love very many individual nootropics by themselves. Like triacetyluridine, for example, by itself works wonders on me. Oxiracetam by itself works wonders on me. Aniracetam by itself works wonders on me. Alcar by itself works wonders on me. And I take phenylparacetam by itself, uh, too, and I love it. In fact, I am of the notion that when it comes to certain nootropics, less is definitely more. And though stacking is useful in the situations that I kind of talked about in the rest of the podcast here, there are also other situations for which it negates the efficacy of certain nootropics in the stack. Being a kind of advocate for the less is more notion in nootropics, that's the basis for the Cortex Gen 1 stack, and I've thought this way for quite some time. I think it's important to at least consider that when you're putting stacks together. I have taken very many, uh, most of the commercial nootropic stacks out there, and while some of them are really awesome, you find that the best ones are the ones with less ingredients, right? Because you don't have certain stacks. I think people will try to like put a bunch of ingredients in a stack to make it look appealing, and they also try to think too much about it. They're like, I, I wanna, we want to put this to negate the, the, the potential powerful input of this, and we want to put this to potentially kind of even that out, and, and I think it's just a little too much, but a nootropic stack should be relatively simple. But overall, stack 
stacking is an integral part of the nootropic and smart drugs experience and will do a lot of people a lot of good if they stack the right things in the right quantities together. If you've not tried the Live Cortex nootropic stack, head on over to livecortex.com and snag a bottle. Cortex Gen 1 is our, our flagship nootropic that I worked about 1.5 years from inception to product production that combines uridine monophosphate, CDP choline, artichoke extract, and bacopa monnieri. The reviews are really starting to pile up on the livecortex.com website for people that have tried the Cortex stack so far, and everybody is just saying great things about it. People are re reporting better focus. I have a United States Army recruiter taking it that just says, my job is about talking to people. And when I communicate with people, I just do not have to search for words. I've got other entrepreneurs that are out there building big businesses that are taking Cortex and getting a great benefit in their capacity to hold many things in their memory at one time, to function optimally as an entrepreneur in a productivity fashion and to have better verbal fluency. There are even people out there that normally take a huge stack of oxyracetam and aniracetam and a bunch of other smart drugs that forget that they need to redose on their smart drugs later in the day because they took Cortex with their morning stack. And for the rest of the day, their brains work great. So pick up a bottle of Cortex. You're going to love it. Thanks so much for coming to the podcast, everyone. Share it if you loved it. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Subscribe to our channel, the Live Cortex Nootropic channel on YouTube. And hey, we'll talk to you next time. Pick up a bottle of the Cortex Nootropic at www.livecortex.com.